Hello, this is a video user guide for Zoom Attend application. Uh, I will start with uh, how to download the application. The website is uh, written here. Uh, so when you go on to the website, you will see this page. Uh, you will download the zip file. I will just save it on my desktop. Uh, and then we will just unzip the contents. And basically we can also delete the zip file after the contents are uh, unzipped. Uh, now, this is basically uh, all about downloading and installation. Uh, there is no need for any extra installation steps. You can just unzip the contents, this con uh, directory, and you can put it anywhere you want. Now, what is in uh, the zip file? Uh, so we have the executable here, Zoom Attend. Uh, we have a link to data tables. Uh, data tables is one of the libraries I used uh, when preparing this application. You can read all about it here. Uh, it is used for uh, adding features to the tables. Uh, so there is this link. Uh, for developers, there is a class diagram of the application. And there is also the source code all the source code is here. If you are not interested in uh, development, you can just delete uh, these two items to simplify uh, your uh, package. Uh, we have a logo of the application. There is a sample meeting file, uh, a sample input uh, that we will use. Uh, there is a template this template will be used to generate reports as web pages. Uh, I will also mention it later. And there is also a batch file which uh, helps you to run the application. Uh, so these are basic, there is also libraries. These are required. They need to be together with the executable. Uh, so you just keep all of them uh, together. Uh, this is basically the uh, contents of the zip file. Next, I would like to talk about how to get uh, some input to be processed. So to get some input, you need to log in uh, to your Zoom account on zoom.us website. I already logged in uh, with my credentials. You need to go to reports page uh, select usage report and here uh, you select a one month window. I will just start it with 1st of November. You search for your meetings. So Zoom creates usage reports for your meetings. These are my uh, lecture videos from November. Uh, we will just pick one of them. So you will just click on this link in one of your uh, meetings. And this part is important. You need to check this box. You need to export your data together with meeting data. This is important. You export this, you save it on your computer. Okay. And then we are basically done. So this is a comma separated values uh, formatted file. Um, instead of this actual meeting data, I would like to show you uh, a sample meeting data that I prepared. This is also in the same format. Uh, so what is, uh, so instead of this, basically we will be using uh, this comma separated value. Uh, I would like to show the contents to you. First of all, we can open it with a text editor. So this is a meeting data. At the top, there are two lines. 
uh, it shows meeting ID, the meeting topic, start time and time, the email of the organizer of the meeting, the total duration in minutes and number of participants calculated by Zoom. Uh, so this small table data is about the meeting and then we have a large table data that follows. It contains uh, the names, uh, emails, join time and leave time of participants, meeting participants. Uh, so there are basically one small and one large table uh, in our input. Uh, you might have noticed that uh, there might be multiple entries for a single participant. Uh, this is because the participants might have joined and left the meeting and later on again joined and left the meeting. So there might be multiple entries for the same physical participants. So this is the contents of the input prepared by Zoom after your meetings. We can also look at it using a spreadsheet application like Microsoft Excel. So this shows uh, the data in more tabular format. Uh, so we see now the top table and the bottom table more clearly. Uh, so there might be many entries here. Uh, the number of actual participants might be smaller than the number of entries. Here it is calculated by Zoom, but this number is also sometimes incorrect. Um, anyway, so this is our input. This is how the input looks like. Now I would like to go to our next topic in my, our agenda. How do we run the application? You can double click on the jar file uh, on most operating systems. This should just open up the application. If this fails, you may also double click if you are on Windows operating system. Uh, you may double click on this uh, batch file. Uh, basically, if uh, we look inside it, there is just a comment to start the jar in case double clicking doesn't start it. Uh, so you can just double click on this and maybe bypass some protection steps. Or you can just open up a comment prompt and you can type Java dash jar and the name of the application. So in either of these ways, you can start the application. The application is written in Java language, so it runs on most operating systems. Now let's run the application again. Uh, the application contains basically three panes. You see there is this left pane here. Uh, there is a right pane. And there is also at the bottom, there is a pane where there is status messages will be written here. So the left top left pane is uh, for displaying data, for editing the data. Uh, basically it's for these purposes. Uh, the window can be resized. There is also a uh, the two panes at the top can be resized. Uh, and if you increase the height of the window, the status uh, pane uh, uses up the extra space. Now the right top pane is for uh, previewing the data and also some processing uh, operations here. Uh, the bottom uh, pane is for displaying status messages. There are also extra buttons here that I will describe later. Uh, now we can actually have a demo of uh, the sample input. Now once we downloaded our input data from Zoom website, uh, there are two different ways to open it. You can drag and drop it into this file uh, text box. Uh, this is one way to open. Uh, the other is you can also click on the browse button and you can select your input file, the comma separated uh, values file. Uh, this is how you load it. 
uh, in a typical workflow, you load your data in the preview pane, you sort, you choose the instructor, and then you just process the data by displaying uh, the graph, or you can just save the graph as an image, or you can save the report as a web page. So this is the typical workflow. Typically, you just load the data and then set your instructor and just do the processing. It's very simple, uh, but we will look at more detailed operations in order to describe all capabilities of this application. Um, now, this is the typical workflow. Now, about loading, as we mentioned, there are two ways, either you drag and drop your input file in the file text box, or you use the browse file selector to choose your file and then open it here. Uh, uh, now, after we load the data, uh, what do we see? So we see here in the top part of the uh, data pane, uh, so this information comes from the input file. So this is the meeting ID as uh, included in the input file, the top small table. This is the topic, let's say this meeting is about uh, Death Star upgrades and everyone has joined this meeting. Now the email of the user who organized the meeting, the start time, the end time, as reported by Zoom's usage report, and the duration, hours, minutes, and seconds, and as a single real number, uh, and the number of participants. So this is raw data. Uh, it comes directly from the uh, CSV file. And here below it, these are calculated values. So by looking at each participant's join and exit times, we find the smallest, this is the actual starting time of the meeting. And again, by looking at all participants leave times, we find the latest and this is the actual end time of the meeting. And this is the difference between, so this is the actual duration of the meeting. So these three boxes are the calculated real values. Uh, uh, now, uh, you see copy buttons, so you can copy uh, any one of those information. You can copy the user email, you can copy start time. So these basically copy uh, the contents of the uh, text field into your clipboard. So you can now paste it anywhere you want. So basically any of these data can be copied to clipboard. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about the preview pane. Uh, so there is a table here. Uh, the table uh, is filled with the names, emails, and uh, the total duration, participation duration of each participant in the input table. Uh, now the table has some features. Each column can be sorted in ascending or descending order by just clicking on the column header. Uh, so you can sort your participants according to their names, emails, and their participation duration. So this duration is reported into two parts. This is the hour, minute, second representation, and this is the uh, a real uh, number with two decimal places. This is the minutes as a real number. Uh, so uh, these are our participants. The number of participants is 38 in this table. This is again the calculated participants. This might be different than what is reported by Zoom as the raw data. So there are actually 38 participants uh, in our meeting. Uh, so we mentioned that the columns can be sorted. The columns, you can change the order of columns by just dragging the headers. So you can put the preview data in any format you want. And the column sizes can be adjusted as well. 
so these are uh, the things that you can do. Also, you can toggle horizontal lines of the table or the vertical lines between cells of the table. Uh, here in this box, this is the actual row count, the actual number of participants. And uh, you can click, you can select uh, any one of these participants. This is a single row selection. And you can also clear your selection. Uh, so these are uh, the things you can do in this preview table. Uh, next thing is about instructor. Uh, first of all, the instructor is uh, some person, like if this is a lecture, the instructor is obviously the person who is teaching the lecture. Um, if this is a meeting where there is one uh, specific person, participant who is presenting and the others are supposed to listen, then this person is going to be the instructor. Uh, so the instructor is conceptual. Uh, basically, attendance information, uh, which we will see later, will be calculated according to the instructor. So if you set a, some person as the instructor, um, in the reports that will be generated, uh, the attendance uh, minutes durations of other participants will be calculated based on instructors' um, duration intersected with them. Uh, so instructor is a conceptual uh, topic. You can either set or uh, don't set any instructors. Uh, now, if you would like to set one of the participants as the instructor, you choose it from the table and then you click the set button. So this sets uh, the meeting instructor here. Uh, you can also clear the instructor. Now the meeting doesn't have any instructors and you can, uh, if you set someone as the instructor, again, the copy button copies this information in this text field on your clipboard. Uh, so these are things about instructor. Now we can also edit the participant data. Here, uh, the bottom part uh, where there are two uh, places for the participant's name and email data. So this part of the left pane can be used to edit participant data. What kind of editing can we do? Uh, first one is merging. Now, if you look at this data, you see, for example, Cyclops. So the participant with Cyclops, uh, this participant joined uh, the meeting with an account where um, he has the name and email information. And he just participated for three minutes and then this is probably the same participant, but different account. So the second participant also has the same name, but this account doesn't have the email. Uh, therefore, these are considered as two different participants uh, because participants are identified both by name and email. And these two have different identifications, but we know that these are the two same people. Um, Let's also look at, so you see here Cyclops. So there is this participation, first participation and the second participation. And these are uh, the same people. We know that they are the same person. So we can merge them. Now you choose the first one. You click on the set to set the first participant. You choose the second one. You get the data in the second participant slot. And um, we will merge the two. During merging, which of the two names we would like to keep, we can choose by using these radio buttons. So I would like to choose this name. And again, we are merging two different accounts. Therefore, they might have two different emails. The one we would like to keep uh, is selected by using these radio buttons. And when you merge, now the two accounts are merged into a single account and the whole data is reloaded. So you need to sort again uh, in the preview table. And now you see, uh, we will see only a single Cyclops participant. Also here you see there is Han Solo. Again, there are two different accounts, but we know that these are the same person. So we can merge them 
get the first one in the first slot, get the second one in the second slot. So I would like to keep this name, I would like to keep this email and merge them. And again, let's sort. So Han Solo is now a single account. Uh, there is one other mystic. So let's also merge this as well. Now mystic, I choose both names are the same, but there are two different emails. I would like to choose this email and merge them into single person. Um, also at the bottom, you see Yoda uh, has some extra notes attached um, to its email, uh, its name. Um, so the second thing is updating participant names and email addresses. Again, we choose our participant, we set it in the first slot. Now I would like to change the name, update the name. So I type the new name I would like in the bottom uh, text field and I click the update name button. We sort everything again. So Yoda's name is changed. Uh, now, if you would like to add emails, for example, let's set and I would like to change the email of Wolverine. Uh, let's say xman.org. Let me also make this smaller. Okay, so you update the email. Um, so this is the second type of thing we can do with participant data using these two slots. We can either merge two of them, we can update a single participant's name or email address. Uh, once you are done, you can click on clear button to clear everything in this editing pane. And also it is important to know that after every modification, like merging or updating, the data, the meeting data is reloaded. So you need to sort uh, again, if you would like to see them sorted. So this table data is also uh, reloaded after every single editing operation. Now you see the actual number of participants is now 35. And there are now duplicates. We have merged duplicates. We have edited things that we would like. Um, okay, now uh, we are ready for actually processing this data. Uh, now this preview table has a different sorting order. You can sort according to three different criteria, but during processing we have a different sort order. So whatever the sort order in the preview table, it's irrelevant. During our processing we have a different sorting criteria. You can sort participants by their names or when they joined the meeting or how long they participated. This is the total participation of each participant. Uh, so let's choose name and then you can also set ascending or descending. And once you chose your actual ordering for processing, now we have three different uh, things that we can do. We can open the graph window. Uh, so in our graph window, uh, we have the participants sorted by our criteria selected. These are by name ascending. Um, here we have the uh, numbers. There is the meeting title uh, here at the top uh, in this window. These are the numbers. These are the names of the participants and their time segments. Uh, so in the graph uh, window, we basically uh, see this. Uh, at the bottom, this is the calculated meeting start time, hours and minutes. Uh, this is the meeting end time. And every five minutes, we have a dashed line. Uh, you see vertical lines at every five minutes. These are the five minute marks. Um, also, when you hover your mouse in inside this region which contains the time segments, uh, you will see a crosshair and also uh, the time, the hour and minutes where you are pointing at. Uh, now if uh, you have set one person as the instructor, the instructor will be marked with red uh, time uh, segments, the other time segments will be green. And uh, now for example we can see that uh, 
here Mace Window started uh, joined the meeting first. Here there is a break, so he just left the meeting at uh, two fifty six, and then he joined the meeting again at two fifty seven, and stayed there until uh, twenty past three p.m. and then left the meeting. Uh, so all these uh, time segments of each participant are clearly visible here with your crosshair mark um, and other uh, things. Um, now let's unset the instructor and let's look at the graph window. Now there is nobody special. Uh, every participant is uh, displayed with the same color for their time segments. Okay. Now, um, here you see when we are opening up the graph window, so it has a certain layout. There is a button in our application, the layout button. If you click on it, this just opens up a picture which uh, reminds you about these um, margins and vertical and horizontal spaces used when generating this graph. So basically at the top, you see there is a top uh, margin. At the bottom, there is a bottom margin. Uh, currently, top margin is set at five pixels. Bottom margin is five pixels. Uh, so the space gap in at the top and at the bottom, these are five pixels. And then we have the time marks. There is right margin, left margin. Uh, between every line, there is a vertical space and between every block, every column there is horizontal space. Uh, their default values are here. When you click on default button, you get their default values, but you can change it. For example, we can increase the horizontal space between uh, columns. So instead of seven pixels, I would like to make it, let's say 12 pixels. You can open up the graph window again and you can see the difference also, let me do something else. The vertical space between lines, so we can shrink them. Now you see the vertical space between each line is shrinked. Um, so basically this region here in the application window, this is where you can adjust all margins and all spaces. And you can also set uh, how many pixels is used to represent a one minute interval. So if we increase this, now we will get a larger graph window. Now on this graph, uh, eight pixels are used to represent a single minute. So you see between every five minutes mark, there is basically eight times five, uh, 40 pixels. So these are the things you can adjust uh, let me also set myself as the instructor. And once you are happy, I will just use the default values for my graph. Also, let me show you another thing. Let's say join time. So this might be useful. I will also close this layout reminder window. Uh, so this is uh, the participants sorted according to when they joined the meeting. Uh, in ascending order. You can also do other things like the duration. So in this case, the shortest, the participant who stayed shortest um, uh, as the total participation duration, it's uh, at the top. And the participant who spent the longest time in our meeting is at the bottom. So these are different things. I will just choose name. Um, Okay, in order to find them easily. Okay, I just sort by name. Uh, once you're happy, you can save as uh, this graph window as image. So this is the image part. Okay, basically when you click on the image button, uh, the file selection window opens up. Let's say on the desktop, I would like to uh, save this. So you see uh, the graph window uh, with your selection of sorting order is now saved as an image. Uh, what kind of image formats are supported? Basically, when you click on the image button, uh, 
uh, you will see that in the status window, these are the supported formats uh, for your platform. So you can basically give your file uh, an extension, one of these extensions, and it will be saved in that uh, format. So this is the image uh, as one of the processing options. Uh, the first processing option is just displaying the interactive graph window. The second one is saving the graph as an image. And the third one is saving this as a report. Now I will do that. So when you click on report, uh, uh, it will be using a template and saving this as an HTML file. Uh, so let me choose on my desktop, you can change, let's say this is uh, Galaxy Meeting HTML. Okay, when you save your report, uh, two pieces of um, uh, files will be generated. One of them is an HTML file, the other is the PNG formatted image that is going to be displayed in your HTML report. Now let's look at this template. So this HTML file is created based on a template and the tem template is in your uh, unzipped uh, folder. Uh, so this template is in mustache uh, format. This is a, a mustache template uh, generation library is used in this application. Um, this is actually, it contains regular HTML code, CSS code for the table data that we will see in the report. Uh, there is JavaScript and there is jQuery. You can also use jQuery. Data tables is another library that is used in the HTML formatted reports. Uh, so basically there are placeholders which are uh, filled in by the application. And based on this template file, uh, the report is generated. Now, if you are uh, proficient in these, you can use this template as a, a basis. You can create your own templates uh, by preserving the placeholders in this template. And you can here at the template uh, text field, you can change the name of the template file that will be used when generating your report. So basically when you generate the report, this template mentioned in this text field will be used, but you can change it. Okay, now let's look at the report contents. Now if you double click, you can open it with any browser. This is the HTML report generated. Uh, so it uh, mentions the meeting title. Uh, there is a table with the meeting data, both the raw data and the calculated data. And then uh, the uh, image uh, of the graph uh, is also here. And then there is a table of participants uh, also in the uh, generated report. Uh, now these tables, uh, both the top table and the bottom table, um, data tables library is applied on them. So this gives them uh, some uh, interesting features. Uh, first of all, again, uh, you can sort according to each uh, column uh, that you wish you can sort your participants or also you can sort your meeting data by any column. Uh, multi uh, column sorting is also possible. For example, my first criteria is name uh, descending. My second criteria is by email. So in order to do this multi-column sorting, you click on your first column and then you press shift button on your keyboard and keep pressing shift and then you choose your second or third columns uh, as additional sorting criteria. So sorting and multi-column sorting is supported. Uh, columns can be reordered again by dragging their headers. Uh, you can select any cell and you can use your keyboard arrow keys to uh, move the selection mark. Uh, it doesn't do anything useful, but you can just mark cells and just maybe point them to your 
to people listening to your report. Um, columns might be reordered, you mentioned. Uh, pagination is enabled on the bottom table. So you can choose, for example, I would like to see 25 entries per page. And you see here at the bottom right, first page, second page, previous, next. Uh, so you can have pagination. Uh, searching is also enabled. For example, I will search my name and then the table is filtered by the search string and there is only a single participant matching the search criteria. Now I will just see everything. Um, at the bottom, there are some buttons. One of them is column visibility. So you can choose which columns you would like to show or hide. So let's say I just uh, hid two columns or you can just make them visible again. Uh, so this is one of the buttons. Uh, the other things, you can copy the table as a text to be pasted somewhere else. You can export the table as a comma separated values file. Uh, you can export it as an Excel file or a PDF file. Uh, let's just look at the PDF as an example. So I will just open it in here. Uh, so you see, you can just uh, create uh, CSV, Excel, or PDF files from your tables. And you can also print your table directly if you have an attached printer. Uh, now, what are these uh, columns, by the way, so about the bottom table? Uh, so we have the name of the participant, the email of the participant, if the account has any email mentioned, the number of entries inside the row uh, CSV usage report that we downloaded from Zoom website. So you see here Cyclops has three entries in the CSV file, but it has two segments uh, as we see here. And now the reason is that so Cyclops has three entries, uh, but one of the entries in the uh, original input file uh, the leave time of one entry is exactly the same as the join time of another entry. And therefore, these two entries are intelligently merged by the application. Um, but uh, the other third one has a different join and leave time. Uh, so possibly this uh, single time segment is composed of two different entries which are just uh, left leave time of one is exactly the same as the join time of another. Therefore, these are merged together. But the other entry for Cyclops in the original input, it is uh, pointing to some different time segments. So this is not merged. Uh, therefore, the number of entries in original input might be different than the number of segments which are created by intelligently merging. Uh, subsequent segments together. Now this is the duration formatted in hours, minutes, seconds. This is the duration formatted as a real number with two decimal places uh, in terms of minutes. Now the attendance information. So attendance uh, minutes and attendance uh, percentage are also shown uh, for each participant if you set an instructor. Now these are calculated, so attendance is calculated with respect to the instructor. Now let's take Rogue as an example. So Rogue has started joined the meeting at this time, left the meeting after the instructor, a little bit after the instructor. So her attendance is calculated as uh, a percentage of the participant, uh, the instructor's total time. Uh, intersected with rogues participation. So the intersection of rogues time segments and the instructor is calculated. And this is presented as both minutes and as a part percentage of the part, uh, instructor's total uh, participation time. Now, if you don't set an instructor, 
let's go back to our application. I will clear the instructor and I will generate the report again. I will choose the same file name. I will overwrite it and let's refresh. In this case, the attendance, uh, so there is no instructor uh, set and attendance information cannot be calculated. So these columns will be all zeros. Now these are um, with and without an instructor. This is how the report looks like. Uh, finally, um, there is another button here, anonymization. So if you would like to present this publicly, but you don't want the names or emails of your participants to be uh, identifiable, you can so click on anonymization after you do your editing, after you set your instructor, you can click on anonymize button. Now this will replace participant's name and participant's email with some default values. Now you can generate graph, um, save it as an image, or you can generate a report. I will just overwrite it again. Let's refresh. Uh, now in this case, um, um, all identification data is uh, removed. So you just have generic names and emails for your participants, but the uh, participation data is real. Uh, now this can be maybe posted on a website or it can be sent to some colleagues. Um, there is no identification, but there is real participation data. Now this is anonymization. Okay, uh, about the status pane at the bottom, which we haven't covered so far. Uh, so there is a large text area. So everything you do, either the success or failure messages, they will be appended here. Um, if you have lines which are uh, longer uh, and wrapped, so you can wrap or unwrap your lines. Uh, you can again copy the contents of your status text area to your clipboard by clicking on the copy button. You can clear uh, this status window. Um, and let's do clear and set. So whatever you do, there is a message, the results will be written in status. Uh, you can click on auto clear. In this case, whenever a message is going to be printed, uh, the contents will be erased first. So you will see only single messages. They will be automatically cleared before anything new is written. Um, two buttons remaining, okay, the about button. So when you click on it, some information about the application is written in status window. And finally, we can exit the application either by clicking this button or by the window decoration, the close uh, operation. So this is basically um, the usage user manual of the Zoom Attend application. Uh, thank you for uh, listening.